Greetings from Three Edge Asset Management. Welcome to our monthly View from the Edge video podcast for April 2020. My name is Fritz Foltz. I'm the Chief Investment Strategist here at Three Edge. And I'm Eric Beagleisen, Director of Investment Research at Three Edge. As we do each month, Eric and I will discuss our firm's most recent outlook for the global capital markets, which is based on our proprietary research model. And we'll point out any significant changes to our outlook which may have occurred over the course of the past month. So let's get started and let's talk about the markets. Obviously to say that the COVID-19 global pandemic dominates the news is an understatement. It's clearly having an effect on the economy and the capital markets. Early last week, we marked the end of the second quarter, of, excuse me, the first quarter of 2020. And for the quarter, the S&P 500 index declined by over 20%. So as we enter into the second quarter of 2020, I'm glad that I have Eric Beagleisen, Director of Investment Research here at 3 Edge Asset Management, with me to sort all of this out. So Eric, let's discuss the eight major asset classes that represent our high-level view of our investment universe. And in particular, let's see what may have changed since early March. And let's talk about equities first. Yeah, thanks, Fritz. Uh, these are interesting, unique, and challenging times for all of us. Never before has the world's human population collectively dealt with something of this magnitude altogether in our lifetimes. But as you said, we at 3Edge continue to work in protecting our client assets in these turbulent times, even if we are doing so remotely, like so many others. So with regard to the model outlook, and particularly equities, let's begin. Fritz, you already mentioned some of the performance figures regarding the equity losses that the market suffered. But it's also noteworthy to mention that the sell-off that, back, that began after the, the Fed 19 peak was the fastest, that is the steepest in U.S. history, truly unprecedented. I, I have a feeling we're going to be using that word a lot uh, today. <laughs> Thankfully, uh, our model research had already suggested a defensive posture leading into February and continuing throughout March. So as we ended March, the model research identified some opportunities with attractive valuations alongside catalysts for reinvestment. So these areas are specifically German equities and emerging market equities. These markets not only suffered material price declines like many others, but their prices seem to reflect a particularly dire economic scenario that may not come to manifest. The model research therefore sees the potential for a rebound in the shorter term, also known as a bear market relief rally. Both German and EM equities have better relative valuation measures as well than say the United States. Now, this may seem like trying to catch a falling knife, we remain vigilant about the possibility of a continued leg down and are watching our canary indicators on a daily basis for these signs, which would potentially and quickly reverse these shorter term optimistic outlooks for these equity asset classes. Very good. And so let's take a look then. We, uh, you've covered Germany and EM equities. So let's take a look at uh, U.S. and Japan. Sure. Yeah. With regard to U.S. equities, even with the steep sell off that we saw, they remain just slightly overvalued, if you can believe it, by our measure though it wouldn't take much more of a loss to put them into our fair value category. Uh, in any event, the efforts by the Federal Reserve with their unprecedented stimulus measures alongside the unprecedented CARES Act passed by Congress should hopefully help stop the bleeding. Though the rather large widenings we've seen in credit spreads, that is high yield and investment grade corporate credit, as well as the TED spread, that is the interbank rate minus the U.S. Treasury T-bill rate, that's concerning for us and for the model should this widening out continue. So the model remains somewhat negative on this space until we see how that plays out. And uh, with regard to Japanese equities, as we've been saying for quite some time, they remain quite undervalued, but that catalyst just isn't there for reinvestment. Great. Thanks. That's a very good update uh, on the equity market. So now let's switch from the stock market to the bond market. And what is our model research saying there? Yeah, so the model's preference in fixed income favors a blend of shorter term and intermediate term uh, U.S. treasuries, that is nominal treasuries. During March, we saw the yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury decline to yet another time we use the word unprecedented low yeah. yield of 0.31 percent intraday. You know, I recall just a month ago, Fritz, we were talking about the idea that maybe the 10-year yield would drop below a percent, and here we are uh, intraday. The, the yield dropped to 0.31 during March. Uh, you know, I we've seen it. the Federal Reserve. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. we've seen the Federal Reserve launch an effective uh, QE infinity program that is effectively money printing without limit as well as the government's overwhelming fiscal stimulus act. These on their own, but certainly together, may lead to a debt explosion, 
which could ultimately result in rising interest rates, which would be negatively impact longer duration bonds. This is why the model has a blended outlook on the maturity. Mm -hmm. So the model does show this risk as a longer term concern rather than an immediate one. Um, as, far as, as far as credit, uh, the outlook for credit is negative, as we discussed, that sharp widening we've seen in TED spreads, investment grade credit, and high yield corporate credit spreads was not missed by the model and typically signals danger ahead. This is a highly active area of monitoring for, for us for signs of continued stress that could materially change our outlook. Very good. Very good. Yeah, the credit markets are as a potential danger for the equity markets is something that uh, very important going forward. Let's shift gears now and look at the real asset markets, uh, which in our world represents both gold and commodities. Why don't we uh, start with gold? Sure, yeah. Gold maintains a longer term positive outlook as governments around the world, not just our own, continue to provide unprecedented levels of monetary and fiscal stimulus. Shorter term, though, it is possible we may see, we may see some level of volatility in this asset class should equity markets take another leg down and more liquidity is needed by those deleveraging. Uh, and then I guess in the longer term, the potential with so much money printing is that gold could, uh, could do quite well, but that would be a bit maybe in the longer term. That's right. Continued debasement of currency globally should, should augur well, as we like to say, for, for, uh, for gold. That's right. Very good. And then uh, commodities. This is an interesting asset class, actually, because commodities as an asset class are down over 40% since a high that they reached in May of 2018. And you could certainly make the case that commodities fall under the heading of an undervalued asset class, but what is our model research telling us in terms of commodities these days? Yeah, we have a keen eye on commodities now that they're trading at these highly undervalued levels, though they can remain undervalued for a long time too, as we know about asset classes. Uh, though with the short-term outlook for global growth now effectively halted, the outlook for commodities is currently uh, the same. It's not attractive for us currently. But we will be watching closely for signs of that, that much needed catalyst that we like to talk about for investment into this space. And this could take many forms. Uh, we could see the, a reversal in, the t in tightening in the credit spreads we've discussed. That would be a, a big positive sign. Uh, we could see various measures of emerging market corporate and consumer demand picking up. That would be another uh, great sign for commodities. So these are the types of things we're just, we're just kind of ready with our finger on the trigger there. Mm -hmm. to, to get into this space should, should that uh, catalyst show up. Very good. Uh, last is our holdings in short-term fixed income, uh, cash equivalents, what we uh, affectionately call uh, dry powder. Um, bring us up to speed there. Yeah, short-term fixed income and cash uh, served its purpose for us uh, and our clients as dry powder in the first quarter this year. And thankfully, we were able to deploy some of that towards investments in, in German and, and EM equities, uh, as we discussed, though we still have some available and are hopeful to put that to work um, should those opportunities present themselves. Very good. So thanks for getting us caught up on our major asset classes and the outlook for the global markets. And now, as we do each month, Eric, I will ask you, what are your three most important takeaways from this video podcast? What do you have for us this month? I'm, yeah, I might give you four, if that's all right. Uh, we'll stretch for you. Feel only lot. for you. I right. yeah. oh, appreciate it. So number one, times are truly mm -hmm. unprecedented. This was the fastest equity decline in the history of the stock market. And it has, it has created some shorter term pockets of interest, namely German and emerging market equities. One, two, mm -hmm. the widening of the TED spread, as well as the investment grade and high yield corporate credit spreads, bears constant monitoring to determine if the Fed and Congress's actions were enough to stop the bleeding or if things may turn around for the worse. Three, uh, gold is a long-term attractive asset class, especially with this monetary and fiscal stimulus we've seen, both in the U.S. and abroad. And then four, this is less investment related, but I'd say maintain your social distancing. It's working. When in doubt, wash your hands. Uh, and if you use a mask, as it's recommended now when you're out in public, make sure you take it off and dispose of it appropriately. Otherwise, you can still risk getting infected. Very good. Excellent advice. And we may actually be reaching the point where that social div uh, distancing is paying dividends, hopefully. So, Absolutely. Eric, thank you very much for that update. That will do it for Eric and me here at 3Edge Asset Management. We will be back again in early May with another View from the Edge video podcast. As a reminder, our podcasts are available on iTunes and on our website at 3edgeam.com. In addition, all of our videos are available on our YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and search for 3Edge Asset Management, you'll see our full archive of videos there. 
And by subscribing to our YouTube channel, you'll receive all of our latest videos on the global capital markets. And so for from Eric and from everyone here at 3 Edge Asset Management, stay safe, stay strong, keep the faith. Thanks for listening. This commentary and analysis is intended for information purposes only and does not constitute an offer to sell or solicitation of an offer to buy any securities. The opinions expressed in this podcast are those of Mr. Foltz and Mr. Beagle and are subject to change without notice in reaction to shifting market conditions. This commentary is not intended to provide personal investment advice and does not take into account the unique investment objectives and the financial situation of the audience. Investors should only seek investment advice from their individual financial advisor. These observations include information from sources that 3Edge believes to be reliable, but the accuracy of such information cannot be guaranteed. Investments, including common stocks, fixed income, commodities, and ETFs, all involve the risk of loss that investors should be prepared to bear. Investment in the 3Edge strategies entails substantial risks, and there can be no assurance that the strategy's investment objectives will be achieved. Past performance may not be indicative of future results.